Good afternoon. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the panel on the role of the academia in regional sustainable of the uh, regions. As was uh, announced, the panel is uh, organized within the United Nations uh, Office, uh, slide. Yes. United uh, Nations Office at Geneva and all the academies of uh, arts uh, and uh, science. A, a joint project that uh, aims to present um, documents for the Global Leadership Project in the uh, conference that will be held in uh, Geneva in the 27-28 uh, uh, of uh, October. Before starting, let me uh, introduce the participants. Uh, first, uh, Mrs. Karin Marquides. Professor Marquides uh, at the moment is in a board meeting in Armenia in Yerevan, but uh, she will, uh, she's going to join us uh, at any moment when she will finish the board meeting. Okay, you understood uh, from uh, Professor Eden Mahmoud that uh, Mrs. Marquides will join us uh, afterwards. Uh, she is the president uh, of the Black Sea in the exercise that will start uh, this uh, autumn. But, uh, at the same time, she is the president of the American University in Armenia. Yes. Professor Pericles Mitkas. That is the actual president of the Black Sea University Network. Hello to everybody. It's good to see you. Also president of the Higher Education Council in uh, Greece. Professor Magdalena Platis. That is the vice rector at the University uh, of Bucharest. Good afternoon. Professor Mihai Gürtsu that is the vice rector at the University of Vidius Constanza. Hello. Professor Eden Mahmoud, professor at the University of Vidius, general secretary of the Black Sea University Network. Hello, everybody. Professor Elena Helera from the University Transylvania uh, Brasov. Hello. Had uh, long activity in uh, university uh, regional cooperation. Professor uh, Reilanu Selesh, Monica Reilanu Selesh. Hello. Hello. Also from the Transylvania University in uh, Brasov, director of the Institute of Research and Development of uh, Transylvania University. Next to me is uh, Dr. Juana Brinda, university lecturer, expert in uh, communication uh, in our Institute for Advanced Studies in the Levant Culture and Civilization. Hello, everyone. And finally, me, that uh, I am uh, Dan Grigorescu, professor for many years at the University of Bucharest, no less than. 50. And uh, now uh, scientific uh, director at the uh, Institute uh, Levant. Uh, what I suggest following um, the recommended uh, procedure for developing the, the uh, panels, I will make it the, in the first part uh, introductory to the panel in which I'll try very uh, briefly to raise the main uh, points in this uh, uh, role of the um, academia. I would say uh, mostly universities, because uh, in, in, in this type of uh, project, according to our experience, uh, academia means uh, universities with their professors, uh, students, and researchers. So, 
to introduce the, this panel. I would say that uh, for the very beginning that um, universities and the regions, the two parts of uh, this uh, uh, panel under discussion, needs each other. University with uh, its uh, activity in uh, education, in uh, developing professional uh, training, in promoting uh, science and uh, culture, is uh, deeply interested um, to know the realities uh, of the regions. And uh, the regions are the places in which all the realities uh, that uh, we may say they cover uh, practically all the fields that are uh, taught in the universities are um, the proper uh, place to know uh, uh, them. On the other side, the regions need um, very much consultancy, expertise, uh, from the university to uh, develop their uh, project and especially, I will uh, stress on this, to uh, promote uh, science, uh, to understand better the scientific and cultural values uh, they host in their uh, uh, region. They host, I mean, uh, the, the places of special uh, natural and uh, cultural interest that are uh, part of the local heritage that uh, represent, as you will see, one of the ways uh, of promoting this uh, cooperation between uh, universities and uh, the regions. For the universities, the regions uh, represent real uh, open space laboratories, uh, living laboratories, uh, in which these uh, realities uh, might be uh, uh, very well uh, known and, of course, known to be applied, to be used, to be used uh, in the um, educational programs. Uh, uh, to be adapted in the uh, practical uh, placement uh, of the students, uh, and so on. Due to the gain reputation in education in uh, training, in, as I said, in promoting science and uh, culture, the universities are better placed than the other institution to enhance uh, the socio-economic development in the regions. Science and uh, culture are indeed the most important fields in which universities might contribute to the development in a region. Raising the awareness of the local communities on the natural and cultural values uh, they host, meaning places of special, as I said before, uh, of special interest, na natural, uh, meaning biological, ecological, also historical and cultural, represent concrete uh, ways uh, of successful intervention of the universities in the region. By this uh, raising the awareness, the um, uh, local people, in front of their uh, authorities, become more conscient on the values of the needs for the protection uh, of them and to value them by tourism, by education, and with uh, positive uh, effects on the local uh, communities. As uh, you can see from the slide, there are uh, needs but also reciprocal benefits for uh, the both parts, universities and uh, the regions represented uh, by local authorities. 
I would not uh, insist on that fact. You can read, indeed, uh, for the university, the main uh, um, uh, aspect, important, is that by this cooperation might be created a special environment for the university, as I said, the living laboratory, in which university can act with the uh, students of course, in close cooperation uh, with uh, authorities. And this uh, will uh, very positively affect uh, the um, uh, education, especially in uh, practical aspects on the, what we uh, may call uh, the hands-on uh, uh, learning, studying the, the, the different fields in a very uh, uh, direct uh, uh, link uh, with the object. The benefit uh, might, uh, is also because it might uh, generate uh, an, uh, new jobs for the student, increase the employability. And of course, not, not uh, uh, in the last point is that uh, with a, such a cooperation, the university po position uh, in the societies is uh, enhanced. Uh, it's uh, increased uh, very much uh, because, as I said, the, the regions really need uh, such um, uh, involvement. Uh, on the other side, for the uh, local, uh, for the regions represented by local uh, authorities, uh, this uh, can uh, increase uh, the uh, visibility of the uh, region on the international uh, uh, world, uh, can um, uh, uh, sustain very much uh, uh, their own projects, much more uh, holistically approach to the, the, the uh, real needs of the region, and uh, of course, uh, this will uh, also contribute to uh, better uh, environmental protection and uh, uh, valuing of the natural uh, resources. So, the, from this um, uh, cooperation between um, universities and uh, uh, regions, it resulted very um, important achievements in the world. The most important is the creation some uh, 15 years ago. The next. Uh, yeah. the next one. Some 15 years ago, an UNESCO Global Geopark Network that started with the European uh, Global Geopark uh, Network that you can see here is an actual uh, map of uh, celebrating the 20 years uh, of the first creation of a European Geopark. Excuse me, doctor. Oh, yes, that now we are now, able to see. That has now not uh, less than the 80 uh, European geoparks. And um, 15 years ago, in 2005, uh, it gave rise to the global uh, geopark, meaning uh, geoparks spread uh, in all the other uh, continents. So m many of these geoparks, are based uh, on uh, university academic uh, involvement in um, advising uh, local communities, as I said, mostly on the values uh, uh, of the regions, of the uh, natural and the cultural uh, sites uh, in the region. There is uh, really a, an explosion uh, of the geoparks in the uh, old because it's a, a real, uh, uh, very uh, good uh, way 
of um, uh, putting in uh, value the, 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 uh, uh, the resources, uh, local uh, resources. And as I said, the universities uh, are very much involved in many of the cases. In our case, we managed some years ago to raise uh, one uh, UNESCO geopark that is uh, in um, uh, Hatseng in the uh, Carpathian uh, area that uh, as, uh, it, it was sustained by the University of uh, Bucharest and opened uh, wide possibilities to the students and professors to, to, to uh, show their uh, uh, knowledge in uh, developing this region in different fields. After this uh, uh, presentation, I will uh, invite you to present uh, your own uh, experiences uh, in uh, cooperation between uh, universities and uh, regions. And uh, let me uh, first uh, invite, uh, invite Professor Mahmoud, if you want, because I know we, uh, we met uh, some two months ago in Constanza in the international, the first international uh, blue growth uh, uh, conference in which we started uh, discussing on the possibility on of the developing in the Black Sea area of a such a project involving uh, universities in the, such a cooperation. And of course, uh, following the experience, international experience that uh, we know. Thank you very much. First of all, uh, I have to confess uh, this is first time when I'm here at this uh, building, which is a very fabulous building in the, uh, let's say, uh, uh, middle in the center of Bucharest. And I would like to congratulate uh, the whole team of this uh, uh, advanced study center on uh, Levant culture and civilization which uh, it's uh, a, an, an attempt to, to develop for this uh, part of the world um, possibility to promote the values of this uh, region. So I also am very happy that um, uh, together with us is Professor Pericles Mitkas. Uh, he's the chairman of the Hellenic Authority for Higher Education. But before that, he is a president in office of the Black Sea Universities Network. And uh, of course, uh, uh, this uh, uh, will allow me to just uh, prepare the ground for his, uh, his speech, for his, uh, the presentation of his ideas with a background uh, regarding the Black Sea Universities Network. And uh, also uh, is here uh, the, my colleague, uh, Professor uh, Mihai Gertsu, the vice rector from Ovidius University, where also I'm uh, teaching. And uh, we are developing uh, excellent projects uh, under this uh, frame. So uh, let us share the presentation. I shall pass uh, very quickly uh, over these uh, slides. And uh, I, uh, I wanted to use this uh, opportunity to um, make the bridge between two different uh, concepts. On one side, we are talking about the role of universities in sustainable development. But the last three years, it was a period when uh, we felt that within this, uh, let's say, concept of sustainability, there are elements which are more related to re resilience, to aspects that are enhancing the role of universities and putting in a different light this uh, concept of, uh, of sustainability. So the Black Sea Universities Network is an um, initiative that started also from a Romanian academician, academician Mircea Malica. At present, uh, the network is a full-fledged organization covering 12 uh, countries, 12 member states of the Black Sea Economic uh, Cooperation Organization uh, with more than 115 universities 
all around the Black Sea with the centers, uh, with consortia and many other activities. And from the beginning, the mission of the network was to promote sustainability in the Black Sea region. And from that perspective, we may say that this has a quite uh, uh, significant and uh, long uh, history. So in this uh, concept, in order to be in the service of the local communities, the universities, first of all, they have to develop competencies. They have to develop capacities to support uh, the, the local communities. But of course, nobody could cover all the required needs of a community. And then it became natural to network, to pull, to bring together the resources of your mates that are all around. And of course, you are first thinking to your neighbors, to the universities of the region. So that was actually the concept of the network of universities. And of course, uh, there is a European dimension of cooperation. There are bilateral cooperations which are connected and uh, overlapping with that. And of course, the Black Sea uh, dimension. So from that perspective, of course, uh, we went in uh, the last uh, 10 years towards the concept of knowledge innovation communities, because innovation became an engine of development and uh, it pushed the, let's say, um, the, the uh, eruption, the, the um, st uh, start off of, uh, of different regions. So from that perspective, the universities became a very important player into this uh, connection with the, with the universities. And at the same time, as you already mentioned, the communities rediscovered <laughs> the universities for their, let's say, ideas, for their expertise, for their capacity to, to uh, bring ambitious uh, projects in the, in the community. So, um, uh, of course, on the other side, we should not forget that the universities have the central, the starting role, education. And whatever we are doing on top of, we are coming back to education. So from that perspective, uh, within the Black Sea Universities Network, we uh, develop different models on uh, uh, having together different universities and developing regional master programs. For instance, you know very well that uh, there were many, uh, let's say, needs and developments in the area of renewable energy sources. And when such a wave is coming, then all investors, all local authorities, they require, let's say, already human resources trained for that. But when? Now. <laughs> they don't have time to wait for preparing new uh, capacities and so on. So from that perspective, this model of clustering, of grouping, of networking to support different regions, it, it was a very successful uh, uh, model. Uh, then the clusters, the innovation clusters, where we are bringing together the local authorities, the innovative companies and the universities, the first model that we started, it was the MedGreen cluster that was centered on eco-innovation and uh, sustainable energy uh, solutions and uh, uh, bringing together local authorities from Southeast Romania, two major universities, the University of Bucharest and the University of Galaz, and also many uh, companies. And based on this model, uh, we succeeded to jump into this, uh, let's say, very important project that is the Danubius RI, the um, uh, research infrastructure dedicated to support blue growth uh, programs uh, along the Danube and uh, in, in the Black Sea, Black sea region. And uh, we have uh, a uh, cluster that is at present working in this uh, field. Then, uh, of course, we had uh, different other developments bringing together programs in the field of space technologies. And uh, we pulled all of them in different alliances for taking space technologies and to put them in the service of the local communities for agriculture solutions, for geological solutions, for 
uh, environmental monitoring. Uh, then, of course, uh, we discovered that as universities, we cannot stay just in the ivory tower, being isolated of different other uh, attempts. So, in that perspective, we had to uh, play a very important role, for instance, uh, uh, the strategic initiative in the field of blue growth. And uh, in this, um, um, let's say, initiative, the BSU and the Blacks Universities Network is playing a very important role, uh, both in the uh, uh, process of drafting, of developing the strategic research and innovation agenda, but also, as also Professor Grigorescu mentioned, we uh, had um, a few months ago, just the week before the crisis, <laughs> Uh, we had a very important, the first uh, conference, regional conference on blue growth in the Black Sea region. We have different models. Uh, we tested those models, models that are starting with conferences, models that are continuing with summer schools. But here on the, on the uh, actually I don't uh, see the left my side, but you can see it on the right side maybe. So uh, it is uh, the, the so-called energy innovation challenge. It uh, has been a sort of contest for the students, bringing together the students in order to involve them in creative, in innovative activities from uh, the uh, uh, moment of uh, being uh, students in the, in the universities and further to promote open science and open innovation. But then we, in March, uh, faced these uh, pandemics. We were not uh, thinking that uh, it will be a long story. We had many <laughs> pandemics over the, the history, and uh, we were not thinking that the pandemics is going to challenge at that scale. So for the universities, it was a transformational uh, challenge because uh, although we were thinking to the let's say, new way of uh, teaching, starting from traditional towards a sort of flipped type of uh, teaching where the activities at the, uh, let's say, uh, lecturer uh, in the room, they can be completed with the other activities of the students. But then we've seen that the artificial intelligence is erupting and is playing a very diffusive role and uh, a very important role in different aspects of, of uh, teaching. And uh, the consequence was that the uh, massive open online courses became a reality. So at present, you can see all around the world that the well-known universities, they are pushing now and are, uh, let's say, uh, putting a lot of fuel <laughs> on the, the uh, MOOCs all around the world, these are the disruptive aspects and we are already in the era of blended learning. How blended? It's another matter. There is a uh, place for a huge conference uh, under the World Academy for uh, developing these subjects and they have many other aspects. But the things are not uh, stopping here because this uh, crisis revealed the new options and new possibilities to bring together information, knowledge, and creative type of activities. So all of these are reshaping and changing fundamentally the aspects of learning environments, and the network university is already there. So the current approach, the current understanding of the network university is first of all, infrastructure as a service to share infrastructures is at the same time the program as a service. So to bring together the resources of teaching and to offer the best quality uh, education to the students and at the end to pull all these resources together. So, from education, of course, we have to extend towards innovation and the notion of clusters are now getting a much broader sense, bringing together different aspects of clustering at the world scale. And of course, with all this, allow me to stop here and to say, okay, we are in a very special moment. And once again, I would like to thank 
to uh, Professor Grigorescu, to uh, Dr. Brinda for um, proposing and developing this uh, panel. It is a very right moment when from the, let's say, existing experience, achievements, there might be new models that will erupt in the next period in order to bring together these resources of knowledge, of innovation in the service very deeply, very diffusive towards the community members. So, uh, uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you. Professor Grigorescu, shall we give the floor to the other panelists? Yes, yes. I think it is May I uh, invite uh, uh, Professor uh, Platis from the University of Bucharest. Thank you very much. Well, I paid a lot of attention to, to the previous speaker. So many things in common and we share the same goals and uh, somehow the same uh, activities and objectives. Uh, I remember uh, how uh, uh, much effort you put Professor Grigorescu in developing the things that uh, have now become what is uh, called uh, the Joe Park, the Hatec country and uh, it's a privilege for me to share with you some other issues that is related to the involvement of the university in the regional community. But I would like to start with the thing um, that you mentioned about the concept of open lab. And I will start with that because uh, in 2019, University of Bucharest became part of a European alliance uh, that is under the Erasmus framework. And now we have this label of civic university and a lot of uh, commitment in order to become open, like exactly you mentioned, open lab or uh, open to, to society. And we have to be much more involved in the uh, community in the region, uh, but not in the way we used to, like different uh, faculties, different activities, but to come together exactly like you said, clustering, and uh, finding proper answers to the needs of the community. Uh, I would like also to mention that there are uh, huge uh, efforts put at the European level and we are part of a university industry uh, network, UIIN, and a lot of resources are put together. Uh, you also mentioned about the Energy Innovation Challenge and my university is still part uh, of a Horizon 2020 project in which students uh, have this kind of uh, initiatives in order to become aware of the importance of uh, developing sustainable uh, energy and how to, you know, on um, how to save energy. And at the same time, I would like to mention how important it is to connect with the uh, uh, regions. Uh, coming back to the um, uh, geopark you mentioned, uh, that we can provide support for uh, local schools. We have developed, you know, a local educational uh, network set up. It is called Edu Geopark. Uh, we have uh, provided uh, a lot of uh, elements in order to develop a master program, exactly like you said. It's uh, a master program, Geobiology for Conservation of Natural and Cultural Heritage. Uh, so uh, we have offered a lot of jobs there, so it's like a win-win strategy. One hour is not enough, I don't want to, to use the time for the others, but it's, it's a wonderful topic and I suggest to repeat this. Thank you very much, Professor. May I invite uh, Professor Pericles Mitkas, who has a huge experience uh, in uh, running with uh, problematic, white problematic of universities. And by the way, uh, Greece is uh, one uh, of the countries that has uh, probably, I don't know exactly, but probably uh, the, the second after Spain in uh, creating geoparks. Um, 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 Lesbos place, uh, uh, Lesbos uh, become entirely, all the island is now a geopark and the, the, the involvement of the university, of the Asian uh, universities is, is, is wonderful, I have to tell you that. Thank you very much, and please, uh, Professor Bitkas. Thank you, uh, uh, Professor Rigorescu. Uh, it's a pleasure to be with you uh, and uh, discuss uh, uh, this topic, which is very dear to, uh, to me and uh, to the Black Sea University Network, and I will explain uh, uh, pretty soon. 
uh, indeed, as you mentioned, Greece uh, uh, is uh, uh, one of the uh, countries that uh, has identified this need for uh, uh, creating uh, geoparks. Uh, it, it's a pity that uh, uh, most of the countries uh, uh, started with the idea that they can do everything uh, without realizing that uh, they have to exploit their uh, unique uh, position uh, uh, in, in the world and uh, their uh, unique uh, uh, opportunities because of their climate, their history, uh, uh, their natural uh, resources and their uh, size and, and, uh, and strength. Uh, but I think um, uh, people uh, and uh, governments uh, begin to realize uh, that uh, uh, this is a better approach and they, uh, they try to uh, shift uh, their uh, nations uh, towards uh, that mentality. It's not gonna be uh, an, easy, uh, an easy job. Professor Grigorescu, uh, uh, introduced uh, the, our topic uh, uh, very nicely and uh, the relationship between uh, universities and uh, regional governments. Uh, universities have uh, uh, a, a pool of experts in many fields, their professors, and B, uh, a pool of uh, energetic uh, volunteers, the students, who are uh, usually uh, more sensitive to global issues and uh, are keen on uh, fighting for great ideas. Sustainable development is uh, such a noble uh, cause uh, worth uh, uh, fighting for. Um, so if, if the region is, is progressive, if, if, if they want to make uh, a change, uh, they should uh, exploit these two uh, pools of talent and uh, maintain a, a close relationship. Um, we all agree, uh, we're all, uh, most of us, I believe, uh, university professors, uh, we agree that the relationship between a university and its region is uh, symbiotic, uh, mutually beneficial. Uh, and this is especially true for uh, regional universities because uh, the leading institutions uh, of the world have a, a more global uh, impact. Universities need, will always need the financial support of the region and uh, may reciprocate uh, with uh, uh, the increase in the regional wealth uh, by developing the human capital, by creating better job opportunities and uh, generating innovative uh, products and, uh, and, uh, and services. So they bring uh, progress and it is well documented that the uh, local and national GDP uh, raises, uh, uh, rises, uh, because of the uh, existence of, of universities. So um, uh, what can uh, the, uh, the universities do uh, uh, to promote uh, sustainable development uh, in, uh, in the region? Well, in, uh, in the Black Sea University Network, uh, uh, which I, I had the, uh, the uh, honor to uh, preside over um, for the last uh, couple of years, uh, we, um, have identified this uh, uh, need and an opportunity at the same time of uh, uh, sustainable development. And we uh, aligned ourselves uh, towards a major uh, goal of uh, promoting uh, uh, sustainable development solutions. Uh, we had uh, uh, last year's conference uh, devoted on uh, uh, the uh, um, monitoring and, uh, and promotion of uh, SDGs. Uh, we established uh, a, a new node uh, on the Global uh, uh, Sustainable Development Solutions Network, the SDSN, um, the Black Sea node, uh, which uh, uh, has uh, its, its uh, base in uh, Aristotle University of, of Thessaloniki in, in, uh, in Greece. And uh, we have uh, uh, developed, uh, we have uh, organized uh, a few uh, meetings and, uh, and events. Now, uh, the uh, executive committee uh, that has members of, from all the 12 uh, countries in uh, the Black Sea region um, is currently mainly university professors, rectors of universities. Uh, their task was to identify key players in each country to uh, and, and invite them uh, as uh, 
country representatives to this uh, uh, node. Uh, but I don't think we have uh, been very uh, uh, successful in that transition uh, from universities to uh, other uh, uh, administrative or uh, leading uh, uh, personalities in, uh, in each uh, country. I think we have to uh, work a little uh, harder on that. Um, Professor Mahmoud uh, has uh, uh, mentioned a, a number of, of projects uh, that are uh, uh, aligned with uh, sustainable development. Uh, another one uh, that uh, started uh, fairly uh, recently is uh, a feasibility study for uh, creating an observatory for the Black Sea region that will uh, monitor the progress of the uh, of each country uh, towards achieving the uh, United Nations uh, uh, SDGs. Uh, this is a project uh, funded by BSEC, by the Black Sea uh, uh, Economic Cooperation uh, Region between uh, uh, Aristotle University and Financial University in Moscow. And if it is successful, uh, and uh, we have no reason to doubt uh, its uh, success, um, uh, then uh, the observatory will be established and that will uh, include all the uh, key players in the, uh, in the region. Several countries have uh, established uh, uh, committees or offices that monitor uh, the progress towards uh, uh, sustainable development and uh, they have to report to the citizens, uh, to uh, United Nations uh, and to other uh, government uh, bodies. So we, uh, we plan to exploit uh, uh, this uh, wealth of, of data and, uh, and uh, uh, initiatives. Um, I think I'll, I'll stop here and uh, I, I may get back if, uh, if there is time or if there are any uh, questions. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much, Professor Blitkas. Unfortunately, the time is running quickly, and the uh, panel is extremely important. I'm sure everybody will agree with this. So uh, I have to, to ask you to, to short your intervention just to give the floor to all the uh, participants. I will invite now uh, Professor Mihai Gertsu from the University Constanza, Ovidius Constanza. Oh, and thank you for the invitation. Um, I would like to start by saying that um, last year in Thessaloniki, uh, Professor Mikas was uh, chairing uh, a meeting of the Balkan University Association uh, where um, uh, we were impressed by the uh, accomplishments of uh, Aristotle University in terms of uh, implementing um, some uh, internal policies to promote um, uh, sustainable development throughout uh, uh, the university, cross campus. So um, we were impressed to see how they um, uh, associate with most of their studies, uh, sustainable development uh, topics, uh, how they associate with their uh, um, uh, with the agenda, research agenda of their academics, um, accomplishments in terms of research on sustainable development. And um, uh, I would like to say that universities such as mine uh, would have a lot to learn uh, from um, uh, universities that have already uh, made uh, important steps forward in this, uh, in this aspect. So uh, we are glad to be part uh, of the um, uh, Balkan University Association and also of the Black Sea uh, Universities Network and to cooperate and exchange good practices within these associations. Uh, the countries uh, in the region face major challenges mostly because of um, uh, poor funding, uh, insufficient um, infrastructure and also some insufficient expertise. 
So uh, to overcome, overcome such uh, challenges and shortages, um, working together is very important to um, uh, join resources. Um, common infrastructures uh, and also complementary expertise is very important and uh, the key in um, uh, addressing such shortages is again cooperation. Um, and uh, speaking about that, uh, Ovidius University is um, uh, very happy to cooperate with um, uh, the Levant Institute. Uh, Professor Grigorescu mentioned in a few um, instances um, these geoparks and we hope that uh, in the future we can uh, continue to work together on um, setting up such a geopark in Dobroja, in our region, very close to the, to the Black Sea coast. So um, uh, to be short, Ovidius University is um, very committed uh, to sustainable development, both in terms of um, um, education and research, but also in terms of uh, involvement with the regional communities, uh, which uh, we want to uh, serve. But the key in doing that is sharing again expertise and resources and thank you for um, opening such opportunities uh, through this kind of uh, uh, panels and th through those associations that we're part in. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Gertrude. I have to tell you as uh, a person that collaborated with uh, University of Vidius with you personally for uh, two years already, uh, you are very close to approach, not the, necessarily the geopark, the places of a concrete involvement of students. We already have two places in the northern Dobroja and in the central one, uh, where we started the cooperation with local authorities uh, to develop center where students with their professor to develop uh, uh, interdisciplinary uh, study. This is a way because uh, behind uh, this subject, there are a lot of uh, procedures and things to be done. Thank you very much again. Uh, Professor Herrera, please. Uh, Professor Herrera? Oh, sorry. Professor Herrera, could you please turn on the mic? No. It's okay. It's perfect. Uh, for uh, inviting me here. Uh, of course, I have uh, many to, to discuss, uh, but I want only to add that uh, it is important also the, the cooperation between university with community. And uh, here I want to add the, the, the activity, the uh, action uh, which university developed uh, for um, valorization, preservation of, uh, of um, um, heritage, technical, industrial, and uh, why not uh, cultural heritage of the local uh, regions. So uh, I want to, to add that uh, in this year in Constanza was developed a course um, about uh, history of technology organized by uh, Romanian Academy. Um, in the frame of uh, this, uh, it was also a cooperation between uh, our university, Transylvania University, and uh, some lecture was uh, held there in this course. But important was that a lot of students uh, who were uh, professors, who were uh, uh, engineers, technicians, economists, they uh, learn, they uh, uh, were conscious about the uh, value, cultural and uh, technological value of the local. And this was very nice uh, um, cooperation. Uh, what I have a proposal here uh, to, to increase the debates uh, about uh, regarding the urban development we have uh, uh, as example Agenda 2000 in which the university was strongly involved. Uh, maybe a new agenda uh, for 2030 
uh, could be discussed in the same uh, term or maybe better than this, in which to be uh, and, and heritage, technical and technological heritage as a um, term which could, continue, could, uh, could uh, sustain development, sustainable development. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Elena. Uh, I will invite you another member of the University of Transylvania, uh, Professor Marika Reilanu uh, Seles, we didn't uh, meet before, but I heard very nice uh, things about you as a director of the Research and Development Center. So please. Thank you very much for uh, your invitation. I am here on behalf of uh, the management of my university. Indeed, I'm the director of the Research and Development Institute. It's a, a big, maybe the biggest uh, institute now um, uh, of research and development in Romania. It was built uh, a few years ago by uh, European structural funds. And um, I, um, just want to say a few words, I will be very short to continue the idea of my colleague, Professor Heleria, that uh, in the Institute, we have many initiatives um, uh, on the line on, uh, in the field of uh, sustainable development and cultural heritage. Very recently, um, we had uh, one successful pro uh, project in the framework of the Horizon 2020 twinning, a twinning project on cultural heritage. It was a, a, a very big project and we want to continue with other projects. And um, uh, just uh, as I said before, to be very short, uh, my idea is that um, we tried and we continue to try to have an active role in the community. And uh, we have very good relationship with uh, the local authorities. Um, being involved in um, different kind of uh, projects. Uh, now, for instance, uh, we apply together with the Chamber of Commerce uh, in uh, Brasov uh, for, um, for, a Europe, for European funds again uh, to, to found uh, an initiative related to um, startup founding for, uh, yeah, for students. And then, um, Another very important uh, event that we organize, annually organize uh, in our universities, uh, the Economic Council. We invite representatives uh, of the private environment and uh, some, some people from the university are there in order to enforce uh, the links between the community and the university because uh, finally we want to respond uh, to the needs uh, from from the community, so we we continuously try to adapt our educational offer and also uh, the research uh, topics to the needs um, coming from the community. Um, and uh, not finally, uh, maybe maybe my final uh, uh, thought is um, that um, in uh, 2016 when I. Uh, initially took this position of uh, director of the Institute. Um, that time, um, uh, the big research projects uh, founded by the European Commission, especially the Horizon 2020, where the main objective may be uh, for my university and uh, the Institute, but uh, gradually, we changed a little bit and now we are very interested in, as I said, uh, enhancing uh, the connection with the private environment and trying to move a little bit from the area of the fundamental research into the applied research. So um, yes, I think that uh, the, the role played by uh, the university in the community in the region is uh, very important and is very important for us too because we are the main university in the center region. Thank you very much for inviting me, to, uh, Professor Grigorescu, to this uh, panel. And if it's possible, I will attend uh, the future events as well. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Elena Seves. So, uh, 
I think in a very short time, we've got uh, some ideas at least. So some ideas on which we might further build uh, some um, uh, conclusion to uh, put them uh, in the report that uh, is expected to be done in, uh, in a month from uh, now. And of course, to establish um, the, a group of, of uh, uh, working group uh, to develop uh, further, because definitely the regions need universities and universities uh, need the region. Uh, for the experience, not only personal experience, but of many other people. I know uh, how important is this one, but I also know how difficult it is to reach it, how difficult it is to reach the local communities, to reach authorities that are always changing politically. Uh, and uh, what we need in this is stability. So definitely uh, this is a matter to be discussed in very much detail. So, thank you very much. Wana, if you have the, some words to, to say also, please. Yes, but before that, we have a question for the panelists. Uh, yeah. Just a second. Uh, before the... Okay. Do, do you hear me okay? Maybe it's better to close from there and open here. You have so to turn off you your microphone. Now? Can you hear me? Yes. Everyone? Yes. Okay, so we have a question from one of the attendees, uh, which can be directed to all the panelists, who is, um, it's Zam Liam, uh, who is asking whether in this post-COVID-19 situation, how will the universities adapt? What kind of learning will we have from now on? Uh, is it online or campus learning? And um, how can this be adapted to the low-income countries? Because that is the most, uh, the most difficult situation situation. Uh, they have um, not only a low income but technological problems to adapt to the, the pandemic as well. And uh, how will this um, learning be kept safe and secure in the, um, in the future? How can these low income countries perform, still perform some kind of education addressing, uh, as uh, our last speaker said, Professor uh, Monica Reilano Seres, addressing the needs of the region because that is basically what we're dealing with. Uh, what you're dealing with. I'll start and then maybe... Ah, Professor Mitkas, okay. please. Well, uh, uh, first of all, I would like to say that uh, uh, distance, uh, distance learning or uh, uh, e-learning uh, is not going to be the uh, uh, main mode of, uh, of delivering uh, education to, uh, uh, to the people and uh, to, to young people, okay? Uh, it, 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 we may uh, move towards blended learning and involve uh, uh, or include a lot more uh, electronic means to our uh, uh, more traditional uh, modes of, uh, of, of uh, education. But uh, I don't think uh, the universities or schools are ready to make the switch and, uh, and uh, um, move to a total e-learning. Uh, uh, so uh, everybody uh, will benefit from uh, the, the major push uh, that uh, the technology is undertaking to uh, develop uh, new tools, uh, new ways to um, uh, communicate, uh, new ways to uh, uh, introduce a, a two-way relationship uh, um, over, uh, over the internet and as interactive as, uh, as more interactive as possible. But nothing will uh, replace the, uh, the classroom, uh, the actual classroom with physical presence. And uh, uh, we as educators should take advantage of uh, uh, existing uh, new tools, but uh, never design the whole uh, uh, education process uh, for uh, distance learning. Uh, that's my take on it. Okay, thank you, Professor. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Mitkas, because this is also the expression of the chairman of the Hellenic Authority for Higher Education, that is the authority that is setting the strategies of the uh, universities from Greece 
And as we know, the concept of academia, of university, was born there. So thank you very much, uh, Professor. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you. If I make a, another co an additional comment regarding uh, the uh, uh, poor countries. Uh, today, uh, the Greek Minister of Education announced that uh, uh, they will spend about uh, 12 million uh, uh, euros to um, um, uh, distribute uh, laptops uh, to uh, um, uh, children, to the children of uh, um, uh, needy families. Uh, this is a very small uh, uh, percentage of the uh, annual uh, budget for, uh, for education. So, uh, as these devices get uh, uh, cheaper and cheaper, and as uh, the internet access uh, gets more uh, widespread, um, it's not going to be so expensive to uh, to have everybody on uh, uh, electronically co connected to uh, to the school if we have to do that. Yeah, thank you, thank you very much. Actually, this was also what I was uh, uh, intending to point on because, uh, to my opinion. Uh, let's say the disruptive uh, the development of the online technologies, it is a huge chance for the underdeveloped and developing countries. Okay. Up to now, for instance, uh, when uh, you are looking in different uh, papers uh, for uh, different Nobel laureates or uh, different, uh, let's say, wise and uh, very knowledgeable people, and uh, you want it to, to listen at least their lectures, you had to go far away, you had to, uh, let's say, uh, make a lot of effort. Today, this is ubiquitous. I mean, you can have access to a speech of a, uh, a as I said, a very important novelist or a very important uh, futurologist or a very important scientist everywhere in the world, and this is fantastic. On the other side, of course, uh, there is a cost on that, and there will be some steps on, towards that. Uh, it will be not possible to have access uh, in, in uh, every uh, place uh, from many uh, aspects of the lack of connectivity or um, energy sources or different aspects, but on the other side, it is a very big chance for the uh, developing countries, and uh, I'm sure that uh, this is a very positive part. I fully agree with the, the thesis which was expressed by uh, Professor Mitkas that this not means that we're going to change <laughs> completely education and it will be no classroom and so on. No, education is much more than just knowledge transfer. Education is nonverbal, is, uh, let's say, uh, interactive, is, uh, let's say, inductive type of, uh, of interaction. And uh, this is going to have new dimensions and new, new values. So from that perspective, um, uh, yes, I uh, consider that uh, uh, the future for, uh, for education, it is uh, as important as we shall fight for it. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. Of course, we do not have uh, to change education. We have to strengthen education. We have to adapt it uh, to the new developments, to the needs of the regions, yep. uh, first of all. So, yes, indeed, uh, I am very glad uh, that uh, you all agree by your speciality, by your thoughts, that uh, we shall continue to, to think on this. Uh, and we also have another comment from one of the attendees, uh, Dr. Livio Ortanu, who is uh, pointing out, first of all, congratulations from uh, Dr. Ortanu to all the, the speakers for the initiative and for the ideas put together. And he's commenting on the fact that uh, all these uh, connections between uh, universities, academia and the regions are um, extraordinary, but first we must focus on training the trainers because we need to constantly adapt um, we, we need to constantly adapt the trainers 
to the needs of the regions. They need to be aware. And uh, there were some mentions, and I'm glad that you are all um, dealing also, apart from the, uh, how should I say, the educational aspect, the idea of transmitting knowledge, all of uh, our participants are also dealing with the administrative part of the educational process, working together on curriculums, um, setting up uh, syllabuses and so on. And I would like to, to launch a question to, to all our panelists. Um, how could um, the uh, curriculums and the syllabuses be better adapted to the, the needs of the, um, of the regions, bearing in mind the fact that all of you have already spoken about the projects already developed and connected to, to the regions? So who would be the first to, to take the floor? I can wait, you are? All right, can I say? Yes, yes. yes. Okay, so uh, it sounds very easy, but at the same time, it's very complicated, but it, it is not impossible. First of all, I would like to mention that uh, professors, I mean, uh, exactly the person that is teaching and is in charge with the teaching and learning is responsible for doing that, no matter what kind of framework or strategy we develop. And uh, professors, can do that, and uh, many of them uh, really do, but at the, same, uh, at the same time, it's not about the content, how do we connect the content to uh, local needs, but it, it is about how we do the assessment of students, what kind of teaching methods we use, and this is uh, one issue that, uh, on my opinion, it is important to have training more and more. Thank you, Professor Platis. Anyone? That's it. Okay, uh, if there are no other, um, no other comments. I, I, we... just want, I just want to add something very short. I think that we, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, I, I think that you, you, I mean, university should be all, all the time in contact, in a very close contact with um, the region represented by, by, uh, by uh, everyone. I mean the community, but especially the private environment and authorities. And only this way being in a very close dialogue, as I, I mentioned that we have in our university such a committee, economic committee, where we discuss um, issues uh, different issues re inclu including uh, those issues uh, in the area of um, curricula. And uh, this is the only way to be able to adapt your curricula to the needs from the community. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Professor. Thank you, thank you very much. I think we can conclude. And uh, thanking you very much for the participation, for the ideas expressed. And uh, definitely we'll continue to, to work together. Thank you. Thank you all for your participation and we will keep you in touch with the report that we are drafting afterwards and uh, also keep in touch with the events that we are also organizing. Thank you and uh, stay tuned to the next panels of the, uh, of the conference. There will be also another panel tomorrow on the role of academia on global governance. So we welcome you to, to that one as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.